Thursday, the constant sound at Daytona, all talk. Today, sweet music to the ears of NASCAR fans. Oh yes, the first day of practice, just nine days to the green flag drops for the Daytona 500. Good news, bad news tonight. Hmm. <laughs> good news is CSU is going to be on ESPN. That is a good news. <laughs> the bad news is they will be the ones walking with their heads down yeah. after the game. 1.5 seconds can barely finish half a sentence in that time, let alone shoot a basketball or so you may have thought. The end of this story, another heartbreaker for Charleston Southern, but it's still a good read. At high point tonight, late second half, Trent drafts, drives. The kid from Buford pulls the Bucks within two, 69 to 67. End of regulation. Bucks have a chance to win it. Get an awfully good look on the fast break. The layup's no good. We're going to overtime. Jump ahead to the end of overtime, like the very end. Six seconds to play. Ed O'Neill, great dish to Curtis Rice. Ties the game at 78. We're going to double overtime, right? Eh. Wrong. 1.5 seconds on the clock. High points. Danny Gavings jumps, catches. Gaffing's got a good look at him. Shoots all in one motion. It goes in. The Bucks have now lost in the last 20 seconds, three times in the last four games. Take another look at the shot. Breaks the Bucks' hearts. These high point on a high. Ouch. 81 to 78, and it's a three-pointer. Wow. Is the final tough loss for Charleston Southern. Good news for South Carolina, though. Gamecocks will face Kentucky tomorrow, but not one of Tubby Smith's best players. Guard Gerald Fitch won't play with a sprained tendon in his hand. USC looking for their first win in Rupp Arena since the 96-97 season. High school basketball tonight. Burke hosts Garrett in a packed house at Rivers Middle School. Burke still waiting for their gym to be done. Falcons down early, but trying to hang in. Good move, getting it to Chris McCullough. Two plus the foul, but Burke brings the D and the fence. The steal ahead to Oliver Young. His eyes get really big. So this is vertical lead. Dogs all over the Falcons tonight. 70 to 43, your final. Burke's girls also winning tonight. Other scores called in tonight. North Charleston beats Timberland. Big game for James Island. They beat Goose Creek on the road. Woodland beats Bishop England by a point. Only the fast need apply. The Bud shootout tomorrow night in Daytona. A race for the poll winners of last year and former shootout winners. Jeremy Mayfield has the poll for Saturday night. Practice today and Jeff Gordon with some trouble right away on the track. His car leaks oil. They figure out he had too much, not too little. So everything's okay but more trouble after his session. Listen closely to the reporter's question and keep in mind the name change the sport is undergoing. Now, even though this is a different car from what you'll be racing in Winston Cup, to give you guys advantage... The next Cup? Yeah, in the next Cup, thank you. <laughs> That'll happen a few times. Um, I just hope it doesn't happen to me. And Pete Lucas down in Daytona. He'll have reports all week next week as we count down to the Great American Race a week from Sunday. And what's that race without the Commander-in-Chief? George Bush says he's going to the Daytona 500. And if the presidential motorcade blocked traffic in Charleston, imagine the fun 200,000 spectators will have in Daytona a week from Sunday. <laughs> we'll stick with the state of Florida. Alvin's Joe Hamilton played for the Tampa Bay Bucks a few years back, but he's now switched leagues. Hamilton makes the Arena League Orlando Predators on an artificial surface he will play. Something South Carolina is looking into. The natural grass at williams Bryce could be getting a makeover. The school says they want to learn more about the new artificial playing fields that are out there and could install a new field or resod their old one this spring. Ricky Bustle's team lost on that turf in 2003. The Somerville native and Louisiana Lafayette head coach signs a two-year contract extension this week. And fans at Pebble Beach ready for anything, including the Super Bowl MVP. Been a pretty good week for Patriots quarterback Tom Brady. A. Super Bowl, Disney World, a new Cadillac, Pebble Beach Pro-Am to finish it up. Brady even shows some nice touch around the green today. Very good. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe the reporter was going to ask Jeff Gordon about his new haircut. Yeah, boy, you probably don't want to touch that subject. He doesn't Jeff. have a forehead anymore. He has a... Five head. Oh, that's Thank not bad. This ever better. Josh and I wearing our red ties to commemorate Josh. President's Day. I thought oh, you just wanted to match me. By the way, day... <laughs> <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. He'd be elected president of yeah, he, most NASCAR states right easy. now. Wins Thursday, the qualifier wins right. Sunday. Now a chance to win Saturday, but on Monday. Mm -hmm. President's Day, a good chance to ponder some of the great philosophers of our time. And it was Britney Spears who sang, Oops, I Did It Again. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s <laughs> theme song this weekend. Jr. hits victory lane one more time. Driving other drivers crazy, no doubt. The Bush race finishes up this morning after rain Saturday. Cuts them short. Jr. Okay, packed house, but not a great night. Third largest crowd, in fact, to see a game at the College of Charleston. Mm -hmm. But I think there's something about a sports four jinx. 
You jinxed you, them. It's all your fault. Tuesday, we brought you the story of the College of Charleston's home court magic. Hadn't lost in 17 games. Have been amazing at Crest Arena. Oops, Georgia That's Southern crazy. takes care of that. <laughs> Not Brittany twice in one week. Coog fans may want to turn away from the Morrow. Mm -hmm. We'll play. Shucks, shoot, darn, too many Christmas. Aw, oh, heck. Goodness gracious. Next up, a couple officials tired of the bad language, not like that, being used by drivers in live post-game interviews have told the foul mouth racers to stop the swearing, even brought it up at the driver's meeting before Sunday's race. The drivers heard to have called it a bunch of <laughs> Mm-hmm. Pretty good day of racing, no matter what you call it. Talking about high school football playoffs or basketball playoffs, the goal is the same, get to Columbia. And the goal is the same, to not lose, because then you're done. Yeah. Yes. Winning so is not good. playoffs yet for the big boys. It's region 74A. The picture's still a little cloudy. Mm -hmm. Are you going to clear it? Try to. Okay. Here's the deal. West Ashley beats James Island tonight. And Goose Creek loses to Wanda. West Ashley gets the number one playoff seed. But if James Island beats West Ashley, they win that seed. Goose Creek is number one if they beat Wando and West Ashley beats James <laughs> Island. I think. <laughs> Try to sort it out in the next 60 seconds. I owe an apology to The Rock. I confused it for a track like Bristol. I thought it was a shorter track. I mean, their speeds today, right around 130, 140. And they still got out, oh, even faster than that, about 160. Okay, fine. I apologize yeah. again. Thanks for paying attention. The search for speed, though, was over. NASCAR hits The Rock this week. A far cry, though, from Daytona, where the fast car wins. Rockingham, more about racing. Qualifying today for Sunday Subway 400, the points leader and Daytona 500 champ. Doesn't have much history at the Rock. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s average finish is 13th. He will start in the top 10, however. Rusty Wallace was fast, fast enough to have the pole for 10 seconds until his teammate took the track. Ryan Newman, the next car after Rusty, blows by Wallace for the pole. Newman wins his 19th bud pole. He won 11 a year ago, the most by far for one driver. Here's the top four. All are Dodges, Newman, Jamie McMurray, Casey Kane is a rookie, and Rusty in the second row. All 43 cars who run laps today make the field after two cars bow out before qualifying. But once again, it's hello, Newman, on Sunday. Stingray's bus won't go nearly as fast, but they do hit the road this morning for Columbus, Georgia. Play there tomorrow night, then bus through the night to come back for an afternoon home game on Ooh. Sunday. Yeah. Ouch, but more bad news today. This morning at practice, two very important guys are missing from the Ice Palace. Kurt Dobbinsbeck called up to the AHL a few days ago, and today Kevin Spiewak also gets the call up to San Antonio. So arguably their two best players gone this weekend as the Rays try to snap out of a mini losing streak. Definitely we got our work cut out for us now. We're going in to play one of the hottest teams in the league uh, uh, since just before the uh, holiday break. And, uh, he, you know, without those two guys that are a big part of our lineup, uh, it's going to be, we got a task in hand. I think we got definitely the guys that can fill the voids, and it's just a matter of them going out and executing now. Spiewak is expected back by Sunday, but with the afternoon game, be tough for him to make it back for face-off. Braves don't drop the puck, they throw out the first pitch today. First official day of workouts down at Disney World for the pitchers and the catchers. They pitch and they catch. College baseball this afternoon, Charleston Southern hosts Maryland. Everybody loves chocolate. Everybody, every Bucks fan loves R.J. Swindle. The lefty keeping the trip shut out in the second inning with the bases loaded, but in the fourth, hmm, Maryland gets to him. Brian Jarosinski jars a three-run homer, would tie the game at five. They would eventually take the lead. That's the score we've got, a 6-5 Terrapin lead in the fourth inning at Charleston Southern. A lovely day for the MCI Heritage Golf Tournament. Davis Love III will defend his term tournament title for the fifth time. Commits to play today, tees off April 15th in Hilton Head. The golf today Nissan at Riviera Open. Country Club, the Nissan Open in Southern California. The John Daly story continues. His first win in nine years last weekend. He's in the hunt again. Shoots a 64 today, thanks to shots like this on number six. Sticks it close enough for an easy bird. Daly 10 under for the tournament. Two shots back of leader Mike Weir. A busy night of local sports tonight. High school soccer at Patriots Point. High school basketball playoffs continue. College baseball and the opening ceremonies for the Special Olympics. A complete wrap of all of the above at 11 o'clock. But first, we've got to do our own dunk contest. You know, last night we showed this young man from the Low Gators game. Yep. His dunk, it's nice. You know, he eventually finds the, the bottom of the net. I'm not sure if they could compete with Mr. Ishmael Mohammed from Georgia Tech. Wow, that's pretty good against Maryland. That would be the play of the night. And then from the NBA, yep. Rashard Lewis. Yep. Not <laughs> bad either. When you can get up that high where you can grab the ball with two hands and on the way up, switch it to just one hand and then dunk it. That's pretty nice. Just climbing the ladder. Yeah. And not a step ladder either. No. I still have the kid at North Charleston. He's an Ishmael in the making. There you go. There you go. Thanks. One game to play. Now at South Carolina, Gamecocks in the same boat, a boat that 
seems to have a hole in it. The 18 and 2 start has turned into 20 and 6 at Florida tonight. Josh joins us now. Any last minute advice for everyone who's filling out their brackets? We're getting close to that time. <laughs> brackets aren't out yet. Oh. Well, <laughs> when they start filling well, out their brackets. Your, I bet you have your Southern Conference brackets ready to fill out. We do. My yeah. apologies. Yeah. They are out. For the next 30 days, in fact, we're going to keep a tally. How many times we say March Madness? There's one. It may drive you mad, but before the madness, the Southern Conference hands out some awards. Coaches vote for their all-league team. Thomas Mobley, the only oh. Cougar or Citadel Bulldog who makes the first team. The senior joins three bucks from ETSU on the team. The Citadel does show up on the all-freshman squad. However, Jamel Everhart has helped the Bulldogs to a two-game win streak to end the season. Not to be forgotten, the Big South Conference. Charleston Southern's Ed O'Neill on the second team all-league. The senior trying to pull the upset tomorrow night as the madness begins. March Madness, that's two. The first round of the Big South tourney at home sites. The eight-seeded Bucks travel to top seed Liberty. Then Wednesday, closer to home at the Coliseum, the Southern Conference Tournament tips off. Citadel and Elon fought the last time they played. Oh. Fought off the court. The winner gets Davidson, the College of Charleston, the nightcap against App State. Cougs beat the Mountaineers in Charleston a few weeks ago, but barely. So the tally is two. Very good. And this is just the second time the college goes into the tournament without a bye, so they have to win four games in four days to win it all. Sets up a big Wednesday of local basketball. Not yet. Tourney time for South Carolina. Still have two regular season games left, but bad news over the weekend. Rolando Howell's season is over after fracturing his wrist on that fall. The senior had scored in double figures in four of the last five games, but the Gamecocks were 11-1 and without him to start the season albeit against a much weaker schedule. The Stingray schedule still has them in California, have won two of three on the road trip, face off with Fresno tomorrow night. And rather than face the loss of Steve Smith to free agency, the Panthers signed their wide receiver to a five-year contract today. Smith could have become a free agent on Wednesday. He led the Cats in receiving this past super season. And the Peach Bowl wants a piece of the pie. The BCS flavor, the Bowl Championship Series, is adding a fifth game to their stable. The Peach Bowl says they are interested in becoming that game. The reason for another big money bowl game, letting some of the smaller schools in on the action. BCS games paid out $14 million per team this past year. The addition wouldn't happen until the 2006 season. The fifth game will become part of the national championship rotation as well. And looking for some other champs? Yeah. Head of the Low Country Dog Agility Course in Mount Pleasant. They let the dogs out this afternoon, getting set to host a regional competition in two weeks. And the first thing that you notice, it's not all the big boys. If you can't hang with the little dogs, don't leave the porch. Size may not matter. It's all about the time. When you go to the trials, you see dogs from, you know, little tiny dogs like Jeannie up to, we had a Great Dane in our last trial. So there'll be quite an assortment there. We have a great time with my little guys. You're starting to see more and more small dogs in agility now because we're finding out, yes, the little guys can be just as competitive as the big guys on a smaller scale. That's right. Yep, more on the dogs and those who love them coming up tonight at 11. A couple of parting shots. High school basketball tonight. Goose Creek travels to Marlboro County and SC State is at Florida A&M. And free speech apparently only goes so far. Sunday's match play championship. Tiger Woods and Davis love the third. Davis, tired of a heckler in the stands who keeps yelling, no love, no love. He has him kicked out. He, he finally finds him. He's gone. Davis was as well, oh, beaten by Tiger. Of course, he got upset the most when he was not playing so well. Did you call that match play madness? Match play madness. That doesn't <laughs> count. Okay. Still sitting on two for March Madness. madness. Okay. Up three. There you go. <laughs> he was ready. I'll put that right there, little tally board. That's all the time we have for right now. We'll see you back here at the top of the hour. Complete wrap-up coming up in sports is the Citadel in action this afternoon. We'll tell you if they are March sad or March mad coming up live in sports. If you're a basketball fan, even if you're not a basketball fan, pretty good basketball today. It is some good games again today. and Not much bracket busting, however, going on in round one on Wednesday. All but one of the higher-seeded teams advanced to round two today, but Almost a different story in the early game today. Furman trying to make some noise against the top seed East Tennessee State. They led much of this game to the Paladins, but they trail when they cut the lead to one. But the Bucks just too big and too good late. Gerald Fields inside. ETSU survives a scare. 94 to 84 is your final. The second game, Davidson's Bob McKillop gets some help from his son, Matt McKillop, with the three. Davidson survives a near scare from the third seed, Elon. Your final score is 
to 61. So here's what's happening tonight. Wofford and Georgia Southern in action in the College of Charleston, of course, takes on Chattanooga after using that 45 to 27 spurt in the second half to beat App State last night. They advanced to play the Mox at 8.30. And last night, one Cougar had the pro Cougar crowd singing his praises. Bernard Jackson's stats won't jump out at you, but as Pete Lucas tells us, the big man plays with a big heart. All righty, Pete, thanks very much. Cougs and Mox go tonight at 8.30. The SEC tournament picture beginning to get a little clearer. USC loses, Vandy wins last night, so they are tied for third in the SEC East, and we do know now that Dave Odom's club will play in the first day of the SEC tournament next week in Atlanta. Uh, no bye for these Gamecocks who lose to Kentucky, so make it five losses in their last seven games. Gamecocks finish out the regular season at Tennessee on Saturday, still trying to secure that NCAA bid. A great team played a great basketball game. Um, and the other team, ours, regrettably did not meet the challenge. Definitely want to get there at least one time in my career. Uh, have not been able to do that so far. And hopefully this is the this is the year. I think this is the best chance I've had uh, so far. We're in a good position still, but um, we still have some work to do. One bright spot for the Gamecocks. They did get to see Ashley Judd in person. The best looking Kentucky fan around. Shows up to cheer on her beloved cats. And it's always nice to include her in the show for whatever reason. Those staff changes we told you about on the Clemson football team a month ago made official by Tommy Bowden today. Mike O'Kane is the new offensive coordinator. Brad Scott, assistant head coach and offensive line coach. Finally, it's eight stories tall. NASCAR fans, get ready for the NASCAR IMAX movie in 3D. Dale Jr., how would he look 20 feet tall? We'll find out. A sneak preview tonight at the Charleston IMAX Theater opens nationwide. March 12th, you can just hear the vroom vroom. Hey, uh, Ashley Judd just called. She wants to get a copy of tonight's show so she can see herself on your sportscast. Who's that? Ashley Judd wants a copy of the Ashley. show. Uh, maybe she'll show up at the SoCon tournament. That would be cool. That would be. Thank you, John. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm Chattanooga plays the college tonight. Their first game, seven teams will have already been like bit the best. That's right. Chattanooga had the long wait, get the buy in round one, and now play the late game on day two. Snake bitten in this tournament though, kind of weird that the College of Charleston is playing the Mox. Snake bitten since it moved to North Charleston. Cougars of course haven't won the tournament since it came here, but last night they're on familiar ground taking on App State in the first round of the tournament. Familiar place, but still serious trouble shooting the ball in the first half. Makes six 